so I'm going to talk to you today about, let's say, an issue that I see in the data industry. So Big Step Park, um, we are a cloud company. And we work with a number of industries and a number of use cases. And uh, when it comes to data, there is, let's say, uh, an attitude or a tendency that we see that we feel is or I feel is kind of holding the industry back. And I think this is what we would like to talk about today, how we can change this so that we're all a little bit better off, right? So it starts from the fallacy of data value. Um, I think you've heard in the past couple of years, you're probably gonna hear it today as well actually, the data is very valuable, right? Data is like gold, data is the new oil. And one I heard recently was data is the new soil, which for me was really scraping the bottom of the metaphor barrel. Uh, we kind of treat data, right? And everybody tells us that we should treat data like it's a scarce commodity, right? Like, like it's a scarce resource, sorry. <laughs> um, and uh, this data that we have is very precious. It's very important that we don't let other people have access to it. We don't let other people take it from us and that we leverage it ourselves. So data is pretty much kind of like carbon in nature. It's everywhere, but for some reason, we, we, each of us feel that we're sitting on a diamond mine. Right. So this is kind of the approach that exists in terms of in terms of data right now. That's actually been perpetuated quite a lot by um, by industry experts. Um, and when I, th I thought about that, there's one other uh, moment in recent times that it made me think about, which is if you know the dot com bubble, right? Uh, there was a tendency back then to think that all you needed to do in order to get rich was to have the next great big idea. Right, so because ideas were so important, they could make you uh, they could make you rich immediately. You essentially do want to share your ideas with other people because they would steal your ideas. Um, so there was this tendency of people kind of not uh, talking to each other, and even and, and this has gone on. Then when Silicon Valley money started pouring into the industry, uh, this year I saw essentially somebody go and talk to a VC, and before they spoke to them, they actually put an NDA on the table and said, "I'm not speaking to you unless." you're signing the NDA. Now, by now, the market is mature enough for, so that we know that this is really not acceptable behavior, right? In fact, this has generated um, the opposite tendency in the industry where investors and business people say, you know, ideas are cheap. It doesn't matter. Everybody has ideas. It doesn't matter what your idea is. It matters what you do with it, right? Execution is what is important. And that's why we have, right, in 2015, a taxi company being called one of the most innovative companies in the world. It's not the idea. It's how they implemented it, right? So how does that apply to data? Um, because we think, well, but data is different. I gather it. It's mine. I do feel that there's something a bit different about it. But really, if you think about any, any industry, if you take the top five companies, the top ten companies, they will mostly be analyzing kind of the same consumer, right? So they'll be using similar tools, and this will be clicks for media, social media, you know, uh, sensor data, mm, market research, public market research, they will analyze their competitors, they'll look at, every, they'll buy data, they'll look at every possible source of information that they have. So in the end, everybody kind of ends up with pretty much the same thing about the same people, right? So we think it's very special, but in fact, is it, especially for, especially for public company, companies? And again, it's not, not all data is like that. Every company has some data sets that are very private. They have their own IP. Maybe it's the way they analyze that data. But usually that requires creative, creativity. That's not something that you took from the outside. It's not something that you measured. It's something that you put in, right? It's something that you produced internally with effort and brain power and creativity. And that, indeed, you should never give away. But the size of that data compared to the overall data, it's kind of like the, uh, a comparison between what you have in your house and what you would actually put in a safe, right? We know that when people, like if everybody ever came to rob us, they probably wouldn't take the lamps, right? Uh, so there's very few things that we know actually, actually matter. And of course, those you should protect, right? But in terms of the other data, um, well, there is a question of what if we made it more open? What if we made public data sets? And again, they don't have to be 
the most critical data sets that we have, but what if each company provided some data sets and make them available for people, for data scientists, researchers, students, organizations, just so that they can actually work with this data and find insights that maybe the company would never even think about. Maybe some of them would be good for the company, maybe some would be good for the world, maybe some would just be good for the person researching it. But the idea is that uh, we are living now in a world where sharing open source has become the norm. And data, despite the fact that it's uh, all data people love to use open source tools, in terms of data itself, is kind of falling behind. And you might think that it's you know, difficult, something maybe you'd like to do, haven't, you haven't really seen it happen. So I wanted to share with you a story about an organization that did do this recently. So um, a, just a little over a week ago, Big Step did a hackathon with TFL and Data Science London. And uh, it was the first time that surface transport, and in case of TFL, this is everything that is above ground, right? So buses, traffic lights, all of that. Uh, they were making pub uh, a public data set uh, and giving it for analysis. So this was quite a big deal for an organization of that size. And uh, uh, Data Science London got uh, 100 or so data scientists into a room and uh, the hackathon, they had a day to work with the data to produce something, right? And um, at the end of it, I spoke to someone from TFL and uh, what I, I, I was asking them if they were happy and um, uh, their answer was, Ioana, I don't think you understand. This has been a massive success, right? So the reason that they said that was that in this case, they actually, one of the teams found a way to predict a traffic incident 20 minutes before it happens, right? And that is huge because in 20 minutes, you can actually do something. You can change the traffic lights to actually prevent the incident. You can do so many things. And this was one day, right, um, with a few teams with one small data set. So they realized that so much more could be done if they were more open about their data. Um, and the thing is that some of these people that you get in an event like this, you will never be able to hire. Right. You probably wouldn't even hire some of them because they would be from different industries. They wouldn't have the experience that you're looking for. Maybe they're too young, maybe they're too old, maybe they're a little bit crazy, who knows. Right. But the thing is, they are coming and they are bringing their passion Right? And they're not there because they are getting paid. They're not there because they just have to show up for a job. They're there because they genuinely want to be there. Right? And they're there to prove uh, out of passion and uh, from the desire to prove something to themselves. Now that is something that you really cannot buy. And those will, there will be insights that you find like that from somebody looking at what you have with fresh eyes that you would never be able to find in your organization regardless of how well you know your data. And in and, and advertising, there's actually a concept for this. When you know your product so well uh, that you can come up with something new, it's called the curse of knowledge, right? Which is from a book called Made to Stick. And of course, you might think, okay, this is all good and well. Yeah, of course, let's share data. Let's all be hippies, hippies as well. <laughs> but um, you know, legal would never sign off. Like this is the most when data projects get delayed. There's always legal that is involved somehow. I th really think that all the world's problems could probably be solved, except there's a lawyer somewhere on holiday, and that's just not signing off on them. So um, the thing is, actually. Um, Although a lot of us say this, companies have found a way to make it work. I mean, companies like IBM, Microsoft, Intel, uh, right? They're very big companies that live out of their IP and they produce massive amounts of open source code. And you may think that these are tech companies, but we're in an age where we're all tech companies, right? I mean, everybody, everything is about automation. Uh, all the FTSE 500s, they hire hundreds, sometimes thousands of developers. I mean, let's face it, there is a way to do this, right? And there are enterprises doing this and doing this in a big way. So there are cases that you can point to of other companies doing this that will allow you to do this in your organization as well, right? You just kind of have to really think about this and how to phrase this problem internally so that you can leverage the strength of the, of the community, right? So the thing is, in order to start, you don't have to start with something big. Start with a small but smart data set, right? Uh, have a challenge, a competition on your website, start a hackathon, work with a meetup group, 
start with 100 gigabytes, 300 gigabytes, a terabyte, start with whatever you have, right, that you can make open. Um, and y you don't have to do it just for the sake of it. Again, when you do this, you gain something back. You gain insight that you would never think about. You gain the power of a community um, that is essentially zero marginal cost almost, right? Okay, you pay, a, you pay a bit for it, but really, compared to what you're getting back, there's tremendous value in it. And I think that if, if you start to do this soon, it will go from something like this to something like this, right? You can start a revolution. And we can all have that data available. And f when we all have that data available, it will be much more about what our brain power is, what our capacity, our creativity, our execution is, not about necessarily who, who has the best data. Because again, let's face it, data is cheap. Thank you. How do we do it with the question? Do people have to raise hands? Yeah, raise hands, put the question, you need to repeat it, basically. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so if we're all contributing data into yes. the open space, there's nothing governing the data triangulation problem and <coughs> the unintended outcomes of allowing our data out piecemeal in this much bigger picture uh, are not really being computed or reckoned with. So do you have any thoughts on that? You know let let me sum, summarize the question. So what about the unintended consequences of making data available? Yes. Um, well, to be honest, I think um, it's a, I think it's a bit like putting the horse before the cart. Yes, there will be unintended consequences. Uh, there will probably be some unintended negative consequences, but I think the majority of them would be positive in terms of what people can do. And it's, I think it's one of those situations where it's worth taking the risk. I don't imagine that all of a sudden, you know, uh, and it won't really be legal for companies to give out very private information still. So this will be, again, data that would be fairly accessible, would just be easier to get by the people who can do good things with it. Um, the people who usually want to do bad things with it probably have a way of getting that data already. So I would not be that concerned about that. I would enable people who want to, to generate change and can create that change to, to do it. Thank you. Good. Thank you.